Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Focus podcast. This is Singing Lisa, your host. So glad to have you along. And of course, as we continue as a nation uh, going through COVID-19, we certainly do wish everyone well as you continue to uh, find better ways to stay safe and to resurface back into life. But very glad to have uh, Dr. Shiva Akula here with me. He is an infectious disease specialist. And the reason why we're able to come together and learn as much as we have about COVID-19. And so, Doctor, we're very glad to have you here. And I will say that I'm excited about your topic because research is another special area in your background. Yes. So I am excited to learn about how you got involved in that and how important it's showing up to be right now. So thank you for being here. I came to the United States in 1983 and I was a graduate student um, at the University of Texas that I was actually uh, working for a graduate degree and at that same time I had the opportunity to work with Peter Mansell who was the leader in uh, AIDS treatment and I did some uh, research and publications at that time and I know exactly how important it was I mean at that time uh, there was AZT that was available which may have not been the best option but that was a foot in the door and then subsequently patients have had AIDS cocktail. So that was a combination of several drugs together and that was the game changer. And the next one I went to uh, Chicago and did my residency and there again I did some publications on the oral manifestations of AIDS and which were published again. And then I did a, a research fellowship at Stanford and I had the great opportunity of working with uh, world's authority on CMV infection. His name is uh, Tom Merrigan who is also the section chief of Stanford University uh, Infectious Disease Department. And he has uh, been the pioneer in trying to uh, develop the first treatment for CMV infection which is a blinding condition in AIDS and it's called as again cyclovir. Then I came to Tulane and did uh, two years of clinical uh, re uh, <clears throat> fellowship and at that time I had another opportunity to work with uh, Dr. Gulam Payman who actually devised the liposomal gencyclovir and we injected in one of my patients and uh, we published uh, for the first time that there is uh, injections into the eye it could be a, a treatment for uh, blindness in AIDS and so that's how you know I did back to all my research uh, interests and obviously I think uh, the pandemic has presented a, a great uh, opportunity again to get back into the research. Yes, well, that's why maybe all doctors seem to know one another because you all <laughs> have been in so many different places learning so many things. And so now, and you never know when your uh, maybe smaller study becomes the bigger study. So now it's very important because how many research efforts are there happening right now? Throughout the world, that there is a data bank called clinicaltrials.gov and it is reported uh, more recently than I saw it was 1738 publications wow. which is involving every nation that there is uh, India, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Senegal, uh, Canada, France, Germany, you name it including of course the United States. Absolutely. The leaders in uh, research so it's a, it's a massive effort that's being done and to tell you frankly that uh, the very first patient or the, the case uh, was uh, recorded by Dr. Li Wen Liang in, in China, perhaps the Wuhan city. He was an ophthalmologist and he actually contracted uh, this COVID-19 disease and he, when he realizes this is going to be a very serious SARS-like epidemic and maybe beyond that he actually did a social media chat with uh, other fellow physicians suggesting that perhaps we need to use the long gowns to prevent them from catching this uh, coronavirus and uh, sadly he was uh, investigated for spreading rumors by the Chinese authorities and uh, he in a short run you know died of a coronavirus infection himself so this presentation is in his honor and I would treat it as a he's a martyr you know for coronavirus uh, infection and 
the one that he wanted to point a direction towards uh, protection, maybe perhaps a treatment in future. Well, very well said and, and, and a deserving honor. And I tell you, as we continue to find out the, 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 you know, the research and find out even where COVID came from, here we now know that there is someone who was the first to identify what we now know as just a very rapid uh, rising disease that we all are trying to get ahead of. So thank you for sharing that. And to his honor, we do pray that much research and many answers come about. So now you have been exposed to all of the research ideas and efforts and medications. We know that we've been hearing a lot about many uh, drugs being used to try and uh, to come up at least with a vaccine to try to resolve this. What are some uh, that are being studied right now we know rendezivir is the front runner because it's been so popular in the news you said something about the vaccine which probably will be the the best course of treatment for this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic but all these medications like the remdesivir and others which i'm going to talk briefly would be a bridge towards the vaccine mm -hmm. so the vaccine may not come at least till october november maybe you know next year early next year but these medicines would be a bridge towards that. And the very first uh, treatment, which is remdesivir, is an antiviral, attacks the virus. This was actually developed during Ebola. Unfortunately, it was not helpful in Ebola uh, disease, but uh, it is helpful in coronavirus and thereby, it is really not the, the best treatment that's been adopted, but given the information that's available to reduce the duration of the course of the disease and maybe i'm not sure about the reducing the death rate that has been given expanded access usage mm. so that's how you know remdesivir is perhaps the only one so far but throughout the world there is so many research studies that are being done and uh, perhaps you know you can project you know all the medications that are being reviewed on a research level to see if they are going to be a treatment mm -hmm. so the one of the important one that i need to mention is uh, hydroxychloroquine which is uh, plaquenil and uh, has been used for years and years and years you know on a low doses for prevention <clears throat> and perhaps it may be helpful in the prevention and uh, there's been a lot of studies still ongoing and we don't have the full results but there's a politically a charged up uh, negative connotation for plaquenil or a perception negative perceptions for plaquenil because of uh, suspected uh, uh, toxicity to the heart and maybe some blindness uh, from it which i have not seen myself but if somebody has a heart arrhythmia problem so then it may not be a good choice mm. so well, yes ahead. those definitely are two popular ones that many are familiar with and i'm sure that since you're mentioning so many thousands uh, of research efforts being made uh, there are some others are there rapid efforts to try and use others in addition to those i know you mentioned cocktails so that yes. may be a favorable it is possible, I think, you know, the cocktails, just like uh, I said something about the AZT mm -hmm. and then subsequently the AIDS cocktail has pretty, pretty much, you know, been a game changer in AIDS. I believe that there is going to be a combination. For example, I am myself getting interested in intravenous immunoglobulin, which has been used in the past. Okay. This is not all these drugs except for remdesivir has been old drugs they've been repurposed towards the treatment of coronavirus so the directions have been changed towards mm -hmm. so we already know the toxicity of a lot of these medications uh, which we are going to be using in the research trial so literally there's no treatment so infectious disease society you know suggests that any patients that are offered any of these treatments would be under a research umbrella so literally there's no treatment so they all need to be under a research umbrella so that being the case that i believe it will be a combination like a cocktail of intravenous immunoglobulin perhaps maybe remdesivir with it or perhaps uh, hydroxychloroquine with it or maybe intravenous immunoglobulin hydroxychloroquine maybe <clears throat> azithromycin so it's going to be a combination of uh, medicines which i believe is going to be 
like a coronavirus cocktail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that word cocktail comes up. Because <laughs> <laughs> people know how important uh, that is to at least get some uh, effectiveness when they want to relax, right? <laughs> and so hopefully it does relax this virus <laughs> so that we're able to see people come out and be healthier. Of yeah. course, uh, with all these combinations, what you're saying is there is no cure. So really any combination is welcome to see what result will come of it. And I find it's so interesting interesting that all of you doctors around the world are doing the same thing to try to save uh, the people that are a part of your region. And so, of course, you're not originally from here, and you shared a story earlier about uh, interesting details in uh, your hometown. Uh, how, And I think many people realize that uh, the death rate is not the same everywhere. Yes, in, in India, um, where I came from, uh, sadly that uh, there is a large... I mean, there's a, it's a 1.2 uh, or 3 billion people. There is no way to social distance like six feet apart. Mm -hmm. So they move in like groups, large groups, even if they put on a mask, that it is uh, not going to help. So their numbers are also climbing up. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I think you know, it's like 100,000 or maybe a little bit more than that. But their death rate has been tremendously low, mm -hmm. little over uh, 3,000 or something. And so that clearly shows that there is something that is protecting them. So what it is, nobody knows, but there's been a suggestion that uh, during my childhood days that we were, you know, immunized with BCG vaccination, that is to prevent tuberculosis. So I have a scar from BCG. So they believe that there is a large number of uh, uh, people in India that are vaccinated with uh, BCG vaccination that may be protective in these viruses like the coronavirus so maybe that is what is protecting them because imagine you know, like 1.23 billion people and you only have about 100,000 you know infections and maybe three to four thousand deaths so obviously there's something that's going on so as a matter of fact taking that information into consideration they actually have a research trial going on right now using what is a tuberculosis uh, bacterium called Mycobacterium V? Mm -hmm. And uh, they're actually trying to autoclave and make it less effective from the infection standpoint, but at the same time provoke antibody response in the body. Wow. That's a clinical trial that they're doing right now. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see that if you are already uh, possessing what is keeping you safe. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Maybe, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I find that interesting as well because I am learning that now the phase we're in is finding out those who have recovered have uh, what they call antibodies. And I know uh, that's been discussed a lot. Are you able to speak to that in the area of research? Yes, I think you know, in terms of the research that there is a, a plasma therapy that's uh, being pursued at Tulane. And there are other areas, you know, uh, you know, universities that are trying also. That could be one of the promising effects as well. So it could be plasma therapy. It could be intravenous immunoglobulins with uh, remdesivir, intravenous immunoglobulin with hydroxychloroquine. It could be a combination of all of this. So I think, you know, there is a, a brighter prospect for a, a combination, you know, therapy in future till we get the vaccine. So that's what I predict you know, is going to happen. Well, I know that all of you uh, doctors are re-energized because you've been seeing, you know, progress and some success in many people who have been treated and released, and that's always a good sign. So uh, how excited are you to be a part of this research effort because there are so many. Are you involved in anyone in particular? Yes, incredibly. You know, this is a great opportunity of my lifetime to deal with this, uh, you know, coronavirus uh, treatment part as a, in a research trials, I am in, specifically involved with intravenous immunoglobulin with either remdesivir or hydroxychloroquine or any of those things that people are taking. So this would be a combination effort and I'm also trying to get into prophylaxis treatments. So the people like the nurses and doctors and all those healthcare workers that are exposed to the coronavirus uh, patients or in the nursing homes what are the ways to prevent them from actually catching disease or if they have it, you know, to reduce the effect of it. So those are some of the trials that I'm personally getting involved with that. And perhaps, you know, in future that there may be an option for me to get involved with some drumming up some volunteers to get the, the vaccine trials. 
So I think there's an opportunity for them. So I really would like to perhaps, you know, throw this number 504-899-2376 uh, for people to call and see if they have any interest in any of these uh, studies that I possibly could connect them. And, uh, yes, yes, because uh, all of the research involves people, so you need people to be a part of uh, volunteering, and there have been many brave uh, individuals who wanted to help, you know, mankind to find out if they possess what will help find a cure and find that vaccine. And so you're saying that if anyone's interested in stepping up in New Louisiana, they can definitely give you a call. And yeah. so what's that number again? 504-899-2376. Okay. So expect to get some calls because I know people want answers. And uh, it's just been a tremendous effort, I feel, uh, across the world uh, to find answers. Uh, like you said, the, the healthcare workers, and I know you've seen it firsthand. You all, this must be uh, an arm me inside of how things are operating because I haven't heard you know many workers even though we've had deaths in that area as well there must be something um, coming along that's being done right so that people are cared for in the process so have you felt like uh, there's been much learned and improved in how you all are oh, cared definitely for this is a learning process mm -hmm. like I said it's a six months old uh, disease mm -hmm. but we have learned a lot yes and fortunately we have a whole battery of uh, medicines that are already on the shelves that we kind of repurposing mm -hmm. towards this treatment so I think you know there's a lot of time we catch up trying to challenge you know with these uh, uh, therapies on a research basis and hopefully you know we'll have that cocktail that bridges towards the vaccine but I have you know in closing a, a very a funny observations uh, especially when I say cocktails and then people talking about from cocktail to corona beer or something <laughs> and interestingly as uh, you know that there was a lot of interest in um, people doing the online search about the corona beer causing maybe perhaps a corona infection oh. <laughs> and so much so with that fear in Mexico they, they shut down the <laughs> production of corona beer for good <laughs> I am not surprised to hear that because when the, when it all came out, and at, I'm pretty sure that's one of the things people thought about first. Wait a minute. <laughs> Has this been here all along? <laughs> and sadly, I think, you know, people don't have an understanding. Yes. And uh, as you know, the sanitizing gels have the alcohol and you got to have at least 60 to 70 percent alcohol content mm -hmm. to Make it kill this uh, mm -hmm. coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And there's been a cases of people drinking, you know, massive amounts of alcohol, especially in Iran. There's been a, a sort of a mini epidemic mm -hmm. of deaths and blindness from ingesting methanol, which is, you know, methyl alcohol. Wow. So it is a sad, but uh, people have absolutely misconceptions and mm -hmm. they're getting desperate yes and they do call for desperate measures which you have explained and so it's unfortunate that people it's it's pro it's very difficult we don't know the mental toll on everybody we know that it's great and tremendous uh, in different levels but uh, just even thinking that it takes so long why does it take so long for a vaccine uh, to come about uh, I know that uh, you mentioned that there are other places that are preparing even uh, medication that they're uh, for their country just in case what they have provided is actually correct. There are some hundred different vaccine candidates that are being tested right now. Mm -hmm. And um, one of them is the Oxford University vaccine trial. And they are actually doing a trials on injecting into the volunteers. And so there is actually a Serum Institute of India that is actually developing or actually manufacturing this vaccine ahead of time. Mm. By end of this September, when the study results would be available, they will already want to have 20 to 40 million doses of vaccine. So just in case, if most likely if that's going to be successful, then we should be able to be ready for it. Right. So that much of interest is being expressed. And mm. I have never seen this much of, in fact, having been through the AIDS epidemic and the research at that time there is tremendous amount of information out there and the technology that's available in terms of the gene therapy and all artificial intelligence and all these brighter minds together i think we are marching towards perhaps you know 
an effective treatment of coronavirus and sadly that you already have uh, a quarter million you know human beings you know that have lost their lives for yeah so maybe you know we have learned from all this and uh, yeah. hopefully i'm very very optimistic that think we're going to come up with something in the form of a treatment first and maybe a vaccine well this is definitely a war like none other we've been a part of and so we do know that all of you doctors and medical professionals scientists are, are on the front line really fighting to make sure that we come out on top and alive and well and so it is appreciated again we can't thank all of the people like yourselves doing the work that you do to continue the effort to find out what is the cure what's the vaccine so that we can uh, get our lives back and, and enjoy one another again so we do uh, congratulate you and we look toward the future for great things thank you all right